Did you bonsai? That's right, the more bonsai, the better. Welcome to Jamie Dove Florida Pottery, and in this episode, I continue to talk about bonsai pots. In the last episode, I talked about the challenge I accepted to build two pots, and then I demonstrated how I hand built those two pots, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Then my wife, Megan, gave me this photocopied article out of a pottery making illustrated magazine from 2008. And this dude, Mike Baum, would throw a squared casserole dish. I know, it sounds crazy. But he'd throw a slab on the wheel as a base, and then he'd throw a short-walled, uh, like a short-walled whatever thing, round. And, and then he would combine the two to make a casserole dish. And I thought that was really cool. I thought it was an interesting process, and that's when I decided I was going to make two more bonsai pots. Check it out. Using the article from the Pottery Making Illustrated as a vague guide slash inspiration, I begin by weighing out the clay. The article called for slightly more clay than I'm using. It also mentioned using a 16 inch bat. I only have 14s and 12s, so I scaled back the clay a little. I used five pounds of clay, throw it on the wheel, and then flatten it out to create a circular slab, just like in the article. I take it off the wheel and let it sit for a while to firm up. This is where I deviate from the article and the plan. I got five pounds of clay, I flattened it out, and then ran it through the slab roller. Now I have a slab of clay that is the appropriate thickness. I use a 14 inch bat as a circular form. Using a needle tool, I cut the clay around the perimeter of the bat. I remove the excess unused clay. Then I take the canvas and wrap it over the clay and hold it to the bat. In one swift motion, I flip the clay and the bat over. I pull back the canvas to reveal a circular slab. Now it's time to make the walls of the pot. After centering the chunk of clay, I push down in the center and pull outward towards the perimeter of the wheel. I press all the way down to the bat and gather the remaining clay at the edge of the bat before pulling up the wall. I gently squeeze my fingers to create a slight groove. I didn't want to throw a plain straight wall, so I pulled it up and out, creating more of a bold wall instead of a straight casserole type wall. Now it's time to let the walls firm up so I can attach them to the slab bases. Now the walls are firm enough to remove them from the bat. I use a fettling knife to get between the clay and the bat. I work the knife all the way around, separating the walls from the bat. I turn the walls over to see the bottom is facing up and the top rests on the bat. Using a serrated metal rib, I score the entire bottom of the thrown walls. Then I score the edge of the slab all the way around to prepare it for the walls. I trail some slip over the freshly scored clay. I carefully line up the walls and lower them into place. Once I've made contact between the pieces, I blend the clay together. Using a wooden tool and a sponge, I go around the entire interior seam, blending the clay. When I flipped the piece over to work on the bottom seam, I noticed that the bottom of the wall was slightly wider than the base. Using a wooden rib, I take off some excess clay and blend the two parts together. I extruded some coils to use as a rim for the pot. Using the serrated metal rib, I scored the coils and the rim thoroughly. Add some slip. Now I take the coils and press the end to the pot firmly. Once I get going, it is easy to attach the coil. I go around the new rim and wipe it with a sponge. I use a wooden tool with a spoon-shaped tip to blend and smooth the clay. Like the pots I made in the other bonsai video, I wanted to maintain a sea turtle theme. So I made a bunch of sea turtle sprigs in advance to expedite the process. I add the sea turtle sprigs to the pot and now I can really see this thing coming together. After letting the pot firm up for a little while and adding holes in the bottom, it's time to put feet on the pot. I like the feet I made for the other bonsai pots using the one ounce measuring spoon, but I wanted to take them up a notch and I added a clay disc to the semi-spherical buttons I used before. This just makes the foot stand out. Just like the sprigs, I made them in advance as well. 
and they are easy to attach on a flat bottom and look pretty sharp once they are in place. To complete the build, I add my Maker's Mark button to the underside of the pot. Here are the two wheel-thrown, hand-built bonsai pots I made. I really liked the way they turned out, and it was a process that I wasn't really familiar with, but one that was not that hard to grasp, which is really a good thing. Now, since making four bonsai pots on my first go at it, I decided to do some more research, and I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube, from beginners to advanced bonsai dudes, and they all shared how passionate they were about making really small trees. And I'll be honest, I'm absolutely fascinated by how these pieces of art are made, grown, and maintained. And I can't wait to try it myself, especially now that I've got all these extra pots. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, hit like. Share the video with someone who could benefit from it. Leave a comment if you have a question or you want to see me demonstrate something. Thank you very much for watching the video. Go have fun. Go play in the clay. Take care.